Dr. Jill Griffin, welcome to Empower Network TV. Thank you, thank you. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, you do an amazing job. Thank you for the offer to the platform. Oh, it's my joy. Just before we came live, you were you were saying some pretty neat stuff. And I was wondering if you could just repeat that. I I asked you, what are you talking about? And you you listed off different things you do, but you ended it by saying, you know, you want to give back and you want to speak into others' lives. And I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's that's where I am in life. Uh, I've had an opportunity to uh, accomplish some great things as an educator, uh, principal, done 20 plus years in the educational system, professor, uh, teacher on all levels, elementary, middle school, high school, as well as the junior college and, and senior college level also. So I'm proud of that, uh, but I'm also at a point where it's time to give back uh, in, in deeper fashion. So uh, in addition to the authoring a couple of poem books. Uh, I've also uh, decided to do a social emotional learning curriculum, this SEL curriculum designed to help uplift, empower others, both students and adults. And I framed it uh, in a framework of the DIP approach. That's D-I-P-P, -P, DIP approach, student and adult success. And I couple that with my DIP approach for educators, which is uh, a different track, but they're all alive. So, and it's all about giving purpose power so they can mac maximize their potential. Where do you get the heart piece from? Why, why do you do this? Great question. I'm from Clarksdale, Mississippi. Home of the blues. So I grew up seeing a lot of different things. It's, it's called the home of the blues for a, a, a real reason, other than what people know it for, for its notoriety. You know, it's a lot of love in the home of the blues, but also a lot of pain, a lot of drugs, violence, racial tension, things of that nature that have primed me and prepared me to, to step out and, and, and do this journey. So I've been able to uh, strive and, and push from Clarksdale, Mississippi. And right now I currently reside uh, in North Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. So that that is uh, something in itself, you know, uh, being able to uh, come out of uh, where I've come from to, to, to be on this path to do what I'm, I'm prepared to do. And it's all about other people. Hmm. Where did you learn that? Where did you learn that lesson that in the end it comes down to helping others? How did you learn that? Because most people, most kids and 20 year olds don't know that, right? We have to learn that through a lot of trial and error. A lot of failures, but failures shopping us. Losses teach lessons. They teach us to, to better ourselves. So uh, I learned that because that's the difference. That's where that's where the strangest secret lies. That we are what we think. We are what we constantly put into our minds and our brains. And if we do have the power to transform, that we can come from wherever we come from to be whatever we need to do to be able to help other people and push and give back. So that's the thing that has really uh, turned my life. Uh, you know, we all go through trauma, uh, different things that have hurt us spiritually, emotionally, uh, however it, it comes, but we have to bounce back. We got to push past that pain with that framework. I talk about the deed dreaming with desire, there's about nine bullets that I, that I go through uh, with that for workshops, speaking engagements, or what have you. The eyes for initiate and invest in yourself. Another eight bullets that go with that as well. First P is for push past pain. And that's eight bullets that fall within that that we talk about and teach you how to recover and push past traumas and strife in order to still understand your value, your worth, because we all have greatness in us. And then that last P, persist with purpose. Persist with purpose. And to answer your question again, that's where I found it at. Because I know now it's not, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us better coming together to help move and improve society in a way that we can touch people, man. That's, that's what it's all about. So how did you learn to transform 
your trials into your wins? How did it all? Because you've been through stuff. I could see it in your eyes. I can feel it in your heart. So how did you learn that? Because a lot, like you said, everyone goes through stuff. Some people maybe have more stuff than others, but everybody goes through it. And that secret sauce lies in how do you transform it? How do you overcome? How did you learn that? Faith. Yeah. Faith. You know, the last P, persistence, persist with purpose. Another word for that is faith, because the only way that you do that is to have faith. Number one, you got to have faith in yourself, but of course, through a higher power, but having faith in your dream, your ability, and you have to commit to that process. Then you want to make sure that you stay on that path. No matter what, it's going to be hard. There's going to be some things that push you down, but you got to keep getting up. And one of my favorite speakers, uh, Les Brown, he talks about if you fall, still, still get up. Still get up with your face up, no matter what. So both things are important and um, what it's all about. And I learned that through, through having a lot of things happen, through mm -hmm. going through things as a kid, as an adult. I lost my friend, uh, one of my best friends at the age of 11 and drowned. Uh, we had gone to the river that day and we weren't supposed to be down there. We had gone anyway. And he went back later that, that day. Uh, it was raining. It was muddy day in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And um, he ended up drowning or what have you. And I blocked that out for over 25 years. And it started coming back to me. Uh, I was I was an adult, well into my 30s. And things just started coming together about that, surrounding that as well. And how we deal with things, it, it, it matters. So, uh, I just learned to keep pushing, keep keep going through things because we're gonna have them. If you haven't faced pain, you're gonna face it. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, it doesn't matter if you're poor, rich, or what have you. You're gonna have some things that happen to you, but how we deal with it, how we move forward. Those are those are the principles that I've learned and that I want to pass on to other people in a much bigger form. It, it's a line, the program that, that I'm on with aligns with social emotional learning. There's a college and career readiness, soft skill piece, as well as mental health competency standards that, that, that go with it as well. So it's about getting it out there to, to help people. You mentioned Les Brown. I love, love his stuff. And he said one thing that has stuck with me for years. He said something about, there's a quote someone made that said, the, the wealth of the world is not in the banks it's in the cemeteries because it's in those places that people brought their dreams that they never gave room to breathe. That is sobering, man. Yes, that's powerful. You know, you don't want to be 65, but have died at 25 because you didn't get an opportunity to go after those things that, that really may have mattered to you, where your passion lies, you know, so. Stepping out into this journey, uh, I'm definitely uh, ready. I've prepared for for I've, I've worked, you know, for, for 20 plus years. So I understand that side of it. But now uh, I'm in a place where, again, I just want to make it better for other people. I, I've had some great success. I was a principal at, at 28, turned around to school from a, a D to a B in, in one year, uh, kept it for four years thereafter. You know, that's that's high standards uh, where, where I'm from in Mississippi. So. Mm. Uh, I understand that part of it, but it's not about that because I know that I couldn't have done any of that or been a part of it without having teams, having good people around, being a, a person with a vision, but allowing other people also to put into that vision and, and, and feel it for themselves, empowering others all the time. But I didn't even see it mm -hmm. on this bigger scale that I do now. So I, I just love the, the path that, that God has directed me. I'm going to continue going stronger and stronger. And I just want to continue to give. Amos, you're doing a wonderful job. I keep mentioning that uh, because I see what you're doing. I know the world sees it as well. We appreciate you. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> so how do we help others find their place, Joe? How do we... 
how do we help others believe that they have something of value? First off, understanding their places where they think it is. As a man thinker, so is he. Hmm. So if you feel like you're gonna be a, a, a great uh, educator or a great scientist, you wanna put yourself in that framework. You gotta do affirmations. Say that I'm gonna be a great scientist. I love science. I do these things because I love to play with things and, and come up with things. I'm an imaginator. I made that up. I'm an imaginator. You know, so uh, those things are important and you continue to work for that. So as I put myself into that position, now I'm able to start changing my actions, my thoughts, turn into what I do. So now I'm able to start doing those things that I've already thought about. Thinking ideas is what rules the nation. Some people think it's money, but I've come to the realization that ideas are what rule the nation. So we want to continue to push those ideas that out process. That's how you determine your place because your place is what you think it is, where you want it to be, and how you want it to be designed. And if you're doing it in, for the right reason to, to help uplift, to help give people spirit, motivation, because that's what we need right now. That's what people need coming out of a pandemic, being able to uh, go through things even before that. But now you're looking at it, people, some people don't know how to respond after that. Some people are still in the pandemic, although it's said to be over. So we got to keep all of that in mind moving forward. And as a leader, again, I didn't realize it the entire time, but I've been trying to implement SEL, social emotional learning. I've been a member of teams. I was a captain of, of my college basketball team uh, at Common Community College as well as Delhaven University. We went to the national for the first time in 30 years. You know, I was the point guard, you know, but I also was the English major, you know, so uh, I'm thankful for all of that uh, on my journey. So I want to tell other people and show other people that they can do it. It doesn't matter where you come from. You all deserve, we all deserve a chance. Let's, it's on you to put yourself in position. Thoughts. I love it. Can we talk about what you're doing, the SCL? What is that? Okay, uh, social emotional learning. It's it's uh, about five competencies uh, that that rule rule it, the government, uh, the principles, <clears throat> and self awareness, social awareness, relationship skills. Those are the primary ones. Um, and those things are these character traits, these ways of living our culture, our day-to-day -day culture. That's how we're going to produce positive people, get positive results, and things of that nature. And it's ever more important in this day and time. It used to be where a, a leader could come in and say, do this or do that, and you had to do it. Now you have to use influence. You got to show people that you care. It used to be <clears throat> where things were, were quite different in those respects. You used to say a lot of different things on the job to a person. Now you got to be more politically correct. You got to make sure that you're considering their feelings. And it is important. It, it used to be said that feelings don't matter. Well, they do matter. Hmm. They do matter. We come to that realization. Now you're able to put people in a position where they can flourish. If it's in the school system, you talk about students and adults. If you're in a business, you're talking about your managers as well as your workers. And now I've come to the realization that it's not about employment, it's about deployment. I've been employed for 20 plus years, but now it's time to deploy myself into others. Wow, I love that. So how do people get deployed? Can we talk about that? They've spent their life, maybe there's some self-worth, maybe someone beat them down, maybe. How do they start to believe that they are, they're worthy to be deployed in life, that there's a mission with their name on it? That's it. No one else can do that mission. Greatness lies within us all. 
And understand is when you find your purpose, you also find you. A lot of times we run from our gifts. We don't put time into our gifts. We say, oh, that's too easy for me. That's I'm good at that already. But really you should be putting yourself in the mind frame that I'm gonna use my gift to put me in a place where I can then do better by others. So that's the beginning of the thought process. And even if you come from terrible environments, I'm from a single parent home. I heard as a kid, so, and that's why I'm able to talk about discipline culture, discipline best culture, that's the term my coin that's attached to discipline culture plus instructional practices equal performance. That's the different approach for educators. So I came through school getting in trouble, bitter, not knowing that I really wanted a closer relationship with my father. So eventually as a teenager, I was able to start many of those, those gaps. And as an adult, of course, I was able to finally find healing in that place. Me and my father now, you know, we talk all the time and have a wonderful relationship. But in doing so, one has to realize that whatever your purpose is, that's where your thoughts are going to be. So. Guys, I love what you're saying. You're very motivational. You you do speaking engagements. Do you have coaching or is it primarily teaching, training? What's it look like? What's the gamut? Uh, workshops, uh, teaching, coaching, uh, mentoring. Uh, I do one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I, I do groups, uh, motivational speaking. Uh, I help around schools uh, as well as a transformational leader. Uh, you know, I mentioned one of the school turnarounds as a principal, but there were about four of them. You know, I was fortunate that it wasn't me, <laughs> but I was able to uh, not only prepare a school for state takeover, but also lead another one out of state takeover. So that experience and getting those instructional practice to help kids be able to better perform on tests, those are some of the things that I, I specialize in as far as the educational side of it. You know, and all through that, uh, I continue to, to continue to indulge my passions as well. Uh, I'm a poet, so I, I write poetry on the side. I uh, also got two books, uh, Home of the Blues, Poems for the Spirit, Heart and Soul, and then Christian Poetry for the Spirit, Heart and Soul. Uh, they're both on Amazon already. Of course, the curriculum, the SEL curriculum, I'll, I have that out uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so. Just want to continue pouring in into people speaking life into people. Uh, it makes me feel good when you when you say what you just said because that's my aim, it's my only aim. That's beautiful. After the interview, can you? I'll tag you. Can you put any links for books or anything you offer? Your website. Just put links in the actual comments after, please, so people know how to get a hold of you and. So what? What's coming up the next year? What's it looking? What, what's in your sights? Okay. All right. So uh, this past month, uh, I had an opportunity to present the different approach for educators at a uh, conference uh, in Flowood, Mississippi, the Green Group. They did a Green Education Services Group. They did a wonderful job. They had Principal K. Fale as the uh, keynote, as well as uh, Dr. Tommy Mabry uh, as, as the other keynote. I had a breakout room. Uh, it went really well. I uh, had about 90% uh, on it, so I want to continue to push that. I'll be taking the different approach for educators to Las Vegas next week uh, for the Innovative School Summit, which is a uh, national uh, conference for educators. Uh, it's one of the biggest ones, it's four and one. So uh, we'll be there uh, July 6th at 10 o'clock, have a presentation on the different approach for educators uh, with that on the 6th. So we're going to continue to get it out there because the different approach for educators, it aligns with the different approach student and adult success. All SEL oriented is all about building up your culture. It's all about implementing those instructional practices that, that children and students can benefit from to improve some of those think, write, discuss, create techniques, stations, reciprocal teaching, things of those nature. See, I specialize in those. The title of it is discipline culture plus instructional practice equals performance. 
the, the instructional practice piece is the most important piece, but the only way that you get to it is that your discipline culture and that's the collective way in which teachers and administrators handle discipline daily and how it affects the instructional practices that teachers are willing and able to use because they only use the particular high yield and strategy if the discipline culture is in place. And again, I, I got in trouble all, all through school because I dedicated myself to sports uh, and, of course, academics. They, they came along with that, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> As you're talking, it you, you kind of remind me of a superhero. You're, even your, your logo reminds me of legendary films. It's a production company in Hollywood. And it reminds me of like, I'm looking at a superhero because... <laughs> the, thing, the things you're talking about, you've battled through a lot. And it's not like, you know, it's not been one battle. It's been many, many, many battles to get here. And that's really what a superhero does. Superhero suits up, you know, every day, whether you feel like it or not, because they know their calling. They know what they're here for. And they're not, they're clear. And they're not waiting for, feelings are important, but they're not waiting every day to feel like doing it. They do it regardless and they suit up. I do it. Yeah. yeah. I have two boys, you know, they push me because I want to show them uh, how it's done. You know, I have a 24 year old uh, as well as a 14 year old who's going to be 15 uh, next month. So uh, I just have to continue to push and strive and battle through whatever it is that, that comes my way. And I mean, that, that's, that's what it comes down to and be a good example. Uh, even your good examples are not perfect, but at the same time, you keep pushing. You keep propelling yourself. You keep bettering yourself. And that's what it's all about. That's the strangest secret. <laughs> that's the strangest secret. I've been listening to Zig a whole lot, and that's the strangest secret. We are what we think. I can't make this up. <laughs> yeah. I love that you're saying that we are what we think. If you're watching Empower Network TV, you're listening. You're listening to Dr. Joe Griffin, who's summarizing it all with, you know, we are what we think. And, and so how do we think better so that we produce a better life? Is there I would ask him. Oh, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Oh, yeah, please. What were you saying? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, again, you got to stop with those daily affirmations. If you're one of those people who, who are having self-doubt, and of course, we all enter those phases of life. But if you're in that phase, you got to talk yourself out of it. You got to listen to some positive, inspirational things that are going to motivate you to put yourself in a better mind frame, put yourself in a better place mentally, you know, so that you can do what you need to do. So that's where it starts those affirmations. Write down your goals. You know, I've got my goals written on my mirror. So each, each in the restroom, so each day when I get up or, or when I go to bed uh, before I, I see them. And that also creates visuals. Because now, see, I'm looking at that and I'm not even in there. The visuals help our learning by 65 to 400%. Yeah, 65 to 400%. That's not a mistaken word. Depending on who we are and how visuals affect us individually. But you, you're going to get around a 65 to 400% increase of the learning when it's accompanied by visuals. So those are some things that now you're talking to yourself, you've got visuals in your head, and it's all about better yourself. You can take those negative comments from people better because they don't matter to you. Their opinion is not your reality, when you realize, when you're living it and you're thinking it and you're walking it and you're putting yourself in position to be that person that you need to be. It is it is. Wow. I hope I'm talking to someone out there today. Oh, you are. You are. I, I'm going to show you this. So Quasi Joe here is someone that, Quasi Joe here, he's on the internet. My buddy sent me an exercise of his to do, and I'm just going to show you this just because it happens to be right there. I'm on day six, I think. And so you literally, you, you get a picture of your avatar, the per, something that symbolizes what you, what you desire to be, your ultimate thing in life. And then you write down five superhero powers that you, that you have. 
Then you write down five accomplish accompli accomplishments you've achieved already. Then you write down five habits you have, five key habits. You write down your style, how you show up, how you dress, and you write down five affirmations. And so I've done this. So I got my, okay. it's it's like my superhero avatar. I don't, it was That's just, what I'm talking about. I am, <laughs> yes, yes. I need that. You, what, you have to send me, send me his name so I can know. Uh, I'll drop I'll, the I'll link like in the comments after. I'll put the link in the comments of my buddy, Ed Carey, did this and told me it works. And I got to tell you, this is day six and I already feel different. Yeah. All you do is this plus confirmation journaling every night, which he goes into. So I just look at this for a few minutes in the morning, a few minutes at night. And then I do confirmation journaling, which, which activates your reticular activating whatever thing in your brain. So anyway, it's just, it's funny. This whole thing is tying in. Your thing looks like the legendary pictures. You look like a superhero. <laughs> and there's a, I want to be a superhero. So that's why I wrote that down. That is awesome. That is awesome. I love that. I love that. And that's what it's all about. You know, that's, that's putting in action. That's, that's creating a visual, but it's also creating a plan. You know, you got a plan like there's a brighter tomorrow. You know, that's one of the indicators uh, in under dreaming with desire. You know, you got a plan like there's a brighter tomorrow. Even if you don't feel it or see it, you got a plan like things are going to get better because there are seasons to everything. It can't if it's if it's already as bad as it is right now. You, it can't be that bad later. It's gonna start easing up, and that means you're gonna start getting yourself. Once you start getting yourself up, now you see that I can go further. And once I go a little further, now I see I can be greater. When I see I can be greater, I can do even more to benefit everybody else. Yeah. Starts with you. But it's, it's, once you get to that side, now it becomes about helping others. Thank you, Dr. Joe Griffin, for being on today. This was amazing. I'll be tagging you in the interview. I'll also put, please put all your links in the in the comments in the interview after. I'll also put the quasi Joe here. If you've been listening, watching the Empowered Network TV, please let Joe know what you appreciate about today, whether you see it today, you see it in July or in August. And connect with Joe. Joe would love to connect with you. And as you can tell, Joe is someone that's here to make a difference. He takes it very, very seriously. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Dr. Joe Griffin. This was a real pleasure today. Thank you, Amos. I really appreciate the opportunity. And, and you all, everyone be empowered. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll connect soon. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Bye-bye.